Chapter Six is about city planning. We will talk about the general trends of urbanization, um, environmental impacts.、Uh, we'll be concentrated on talking about、uh, the suburban sprawl, and、uh, our goal is to get some ideas how to plan for livable, sustainable, and resilient cities. We shape our cities, and then our cities shape us. And this is absolutely true. We affect our environment, and our environment affects us. There's a clear trend: more and more people are living in cities, regardless of their income. Okay, and if we if we took take a look at the numbers here from 1950 to 2050, this is a projected. Population, and we can see there's rapid growth of populations in cities. We're talking about several millions to over twenty and thirty millions. That's a lot of people. Dubai, for example,、um, in the past, I would say forty years, the population increased over tenfold. I need to、uh, emphasize this concept: infrastructure. What is infrastructure? Those are roads, buildings, parking lots,、um, usually built by government. And how are urban areas changing more and more people? Okay, the the word cities add more than one million people per week. A mega city has a population over ten million, and the meta city has a population of twenty million people. And we often use the word metropolitan area or megapolis. That means、uh, large areas with merging cities. It's hard to、uh, distinguish which city it is. For example, the Houston metropolitan area is hard to. Distinguish、uh, where exactly is the boundary between Sugarland and Houston, or、um, Humble Kingwood with Houston. It's like a lot of small cities all merge into one large city area. The environmental impacts of urbanization. We transformed incredible amount of natural resources during the development. And we lost a lot of ecosystems, such as wetlands. And this picture shows Mexico City.、Um, the trim of the Mexico City used to be a lake. The lake was drained, and the salt marsh is gone. It's all converted to residential area. And the California, huh? The coastal wetlands, more than ninety、uh, percent was lost due to the development. And those metropolitan area has very big ecological footprints. For example, the San Francisco, Oakland, Hayward metropolitan area. It has a fairly small percentage of the area size compared to the size of California, but its its ecological footprint is forty eight times higher. Than the actual size of this area, wow! That that's nearly three quarters of the entire state of California. And another、uh, downside of、uh, the highly populated area is the infectious disease. Okay, so the, there was a case in nineteen、uh, about nineteen sixties. When those people、um, move from Europe to North America, there's cholera breakout and other infectious disease epidemics. Of course, the cities provide opportunities. That's why people move to cities, such as increase of wages and the wealth, and you earn fifteen percent more because cities have better inter-、um, better networks or connections. And also,、um, the increased population density, or called the urban density, decreases the cost for services per capita. 
and we can see the city um, and national per capita em emissions comparison here. Okay, so in Chicago, uh, this is the national emissions, and the per capita emission is like half of the national emissions. So this is interesting. Cities not only bring more pol pollution, but per person it decreases compared to the national level. And the more people share the roads, right? We have mass transit, and the efficiency gains and the reduction of the green ha uh, greenhouse gas emissions happen. Slums are extreme case of urbanization. For example, in Mumbai, India, um, one square mile, there's more than 600k people living in, packed in such small area. And of course, it's not healthy for people because you can see the land uh, planning is poor, the regulations are poor, and the slum is characterized by substandard housing, a lack of formal property ownership arrangements, inadequate urban services, and high rates of poverty. And the environmental pollution is also really bad in those areas. And the slum also provide economic and social networking. Um, usually people uh, move to slums under undesirable conditions like war, political oppression, and economic hardships. And the perception, which is called bright light syndrome, like people perceive the cities as much more fancier uh, place to live because of those opportunities, uh, excitement and freedom drive those people to cluster in, the, in one um, very highly compact area. But of course, it becomes an area of support based on, uh, around family and other social contacts. So here, the people's bonding are getting stronger because they live close to each other. That's fast, faster the informal economy. Now, uh, let's switch gear um, to talk about the, the suburban sprawl. Okay, that's the um, spread of urban population away from the cities to areas with low population densities. A less dense and a more resource intensive form of urbanization that has its own environmental and social challenges. So in these areas, the population is fairly low and it has characteristics of um, transportations and environmental pollution. One characteristic of sprawl is one-use zones or distinct zones that serve one particular purpose. And it's not like the highly populated cities or slums. It has a mixed use of land. And here, like one structure only serves one purpose of use. And the dwelling units per acre is fairly low. See uh, here, a single family detached home that is only three to four DU per acre. And if we look at the high rise apartment buildings inside of the cities, uh, the, the DU per acre is much higher. This is 30 dwelling units. All use the same size of area. Another measurement is floor to area ratio called FAR which calculates the total floor space of a building and the area of the land it is built upon. For example, the Com Comcast system in Philadelphia has a FAR of 18, so that's much more higher than a story building, one story building like this. This is only one zero, 1.0. 